Now, in today's class, let us learn the second method of preparation of alkanes by taking carboxylic acid. Now, this method is called Kolbe's electrolysis process. Kolbe's electrolysis process. This method was shown to us by the scientist Kolbe, so it's been named that name. And the principle used is electrolysis. For carrying out the process of electrolysis, we require electrodes. The positively charged electrodes are called anode and the negatively charged electrodes are called cathode. Then these electrodes are kept immersed in the solutions which can conduct the electric current called electrolytes. The electrolytes in this process that we are going to use would be either we can take sodium salt of this carboxylic acid namely sodium acetate or sodium ethanoate or else we can take potassium salt of the carboxylic acid namely potassium acetate or potassium ethanoate any of them will act as the electrolyte in fact both of them are strong electrolytes next we need to pass current from external source through the electrodes so that the electrolysis process can set in now let us carry on with the actual reaction. These are the requirements for carrying out the electrolysis process. Let us see how this process occurs. We have taken sodium salt of carboxylic acid, sodium acetate or sodium ethanoate when put into the solution. It is a strong electrolyte it immediately ionizes forming acetate ion and sodium ion. Acetate ion is negatively charged ion and sodium ion is positively charged ion. Now they start moving towards the respective terminals. Let us see what happens at each terminal. At anode. Acetate ion being negatively charged ion is attracted towards the anode terminal. Positively charged terminal. So, this acetate ion will undergo splitting up here forming methyl free radical. Then, this COO will combine together forming carbon dioxide which is liberated and the negative charge is because of the excess electron it possesses. So this excess electron is released into the solution. Now two such molecules of acetate ions will release two molecules of methyl free radical forming two molecules of carbon dioxide and also releasing two electrons into the solution. Now, two such methyl free radical will combine with each other forming C2H6 that is ethane which is the second member of the alkane. Now, let us Understand what is happening at cathode terminal or the negatively charged terminal. Who would be moving towards the cathode terminal? Sodium ions would also be moving towards this terminal parallelly in the solution because we have the presence of water there. This undergoes splitting, forming. H plus ions and 
OH minus ions. Now, this H plus ion which is there in the solution will take this electron and then gets converted into atomic hydrogen. Now, two such H plus ions will take two electrons forming dihydrogen or the molecular hydrogen which is the gas and it gets liberated at cathode terminal. Next, this sodium ion which is present in the solution will now, which has moved towards the cathode terminal, will now react with this OH minus ion forming sodium hydroxide. So, what are all the things obtained by this process of electrolysis? At anode, carbon dioxide is liberated along with the formation of ethane, the required alkane for us. And at cathode terminal, hydrogen gas is liberated along with the formation of sodium hydroxide in the solution. So, this is a very very important phenomenon by which we get so many important byproducts along with the alkane. Now, the point of focus here is that we cannot prepare methane by this phenomenon for the reason methane is containing only one carbon atom whereas in this process whatever we can prepare would be the ones which would be containing more number of carbon atoms. As we can see two methyl radicals combined to form the higher alkene. So therefore we cannot prepare methane by this process. This one should bear in mind. So apart from methane, many other alkenes can be prepared by the same general method.